So this is what the other side of the screen feels like. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Geeks Tutorials, and this is FPS 1.44. And yes, I'm on the other side of the screen because my cord was too short to reach my monitor. But anyways, back to the first person shooter. So in our last episode, we uh, basically just created a timer that just allowed the enemy to fire bullets in bursts at the player. But really, they're not really at the player, they're just whatever direction the gun happens to be shooting at. So we're going to add some more behaviors to the gun. First of all, we're going to add a limitation to make sure the enemy doesn't try shooting at the player unless they can actually fire at the player and see the player and uh, are actually aiming in their general direction. Uh, next, we are going to add some general aiming so uh, we can adjust how much the gun can move in relation uh, to the actual enemy body so that we can just add a little bit more accuracy uh, to the direction that the gun is aiming and it actually aims at the player. Uh, next we are actually going to sort of undo that and we're going to add some unaccuracy or in other words a little bit of gun wobble because nobody can hold the gun perfectly steady so this will be another variable amount that we can uh, adjust so if we make it a really really large number the enemy is going to be holding the gun like this but if we make it zero they're going to be perfectly right on aiming exactly where they need to aim um, next we're going to add some recoil to the gun um, we're going to do that by actually making the gun model a child of the actual gun object with the gun script on it or the enemy gun, gun script on it um, and I believe that is pretty much everything so yeah why don't we open up the code and actually see how we're going to do all of this alright so today we're only going to be looking at the enemy gun script and we're going to be modifying it uh, from the way that it was uh, before so I'm just gonna go over the whole gun script again and uh, just briefly explain the parts from our last episode just because a couple of the things might have changed a little bit but yeah why don't we start off with this first group of variables so we have the bullet this is the prefab of the bullet that we're gonna be shooting um, and then we have the bullet spawn this is going to be an empty game object and its transform is going to be used to represent where we're going to spawn the bullets and what direction the bullets are going to shoot at uh, fire speed the number of bullets per second that the gun is going to fire track fire is just a timer to keep track of that uh, fire burst time and fire burst random add is um, the amount of time plus a little bit of random amount how uh, long the enemy is going to be holding the trigger down for burst pause time the exact opposite is how long the enemy is going to let go of the trigger for um, track burst and track burst pause are just going to be the variables that we're going to use to uh, actually be timers to uh, have the enemy's finger go on and off the trigger and now let's see these are all the variables that we're really going to be looking at in this episode. All right, so the first of these variables is going to be enemy body transform. Now, uh, this is just going to be the enemy body or the uh, game object that actually has the model of the enemy on it. And we're just gonna use this uh, just to make sure the gun doesn't go too far over any direction or just try to aim at too much of an angle and uh, whereas uh, max angle is the variable that we're going to be using to compare against enemy body or enemy body transform dot forward to make sure that we're not aiming too far in any direction. Uh, the next variable, which I have hidden in the inspector, uh, is original local position, and this is a vector three. Um, so this is going to be for the uh, recoil gun model child. So we're creating a game object that's going to be a child of the game object that this script is attached to, and that's going to be the game object we're actually going to put the gun model on, and we're going to make the uh, bullet spawn a child of that game object, and then through this script, we're going to control the recoil, and we're going to use original local pose uh, to make sure that we actually go back to the position that we originally put it at. Um, the next variable is target, and this is of type transform, and uh, this is going to be whatever we want the gun to shoot at. And if we don't set it to anything in the in the inspector, it's just going to automatically assume that we're looking for the player, and it's going to find the player through the tag player, 
and save it inside of that variable so that we know that we're shooting at the player. Uh, the next variable is turn speed. Uh, we're just going to be using um, the function slurp, quaternion.slurp. Um, so not necessarily the exact way you want to use the variable or the function slurp um, because like I said in previous episodes, you never want to use slurp for angles uh, with things that you can see very closely. Uh, such as the camera or the gun that the player is holding, but because this is the gun that the enemy is holding and chances are it's going to be really far away and it's already on top of a moving enemy, you're not going to notice those very tiny jittery movements. So in this case, it's perfectly okay to use. Uh, the next variable we have is target rotation. So target rotation is going to be the variable um, that is going to be a quaternion that represents where we want the gun to actually aim at. Um, and then we're going to use turn speed to turn the gun from where it actually is to the target rotation to make sure the gun doesn't jump to where it wants to go. Uh, the next net variable we have is unaccuracy. So this number is going to be a number the larger we make it, the more the gun is going to wobble and basically just be unsteady. And max angle, I briefly mentioned, this is going to be the max angle that the gun can aim relative to the enemy body. So if we set this to say 45 degrees, the gun can go anywhere from here to here to here and same for up and down. So it's just the maximum angle it can look away from where the enemy body is currently looking. Um, and then we have angle start shoot. So this is going to be the angle that the uh, enemy is going to start shooting um, for where, where it is relative to the player. So we're going to measure the difference between the angle of, I can't remember if it's the enemy body or the gun itself, but one of those two. Um, we're going to measure the angle between that transform dot forward and then the uh, trans or not the transform the vector 3 magnitude direction that represents the direction from the enemy body to the player and then if that is within uh, the angle start shoot the enemy is going to start shooting um, the next variable we have is body script and movement script and these are just to remember and access variables from the enemy body script and the enemy movement script so that we can just access those very quickly and then we have a bunch of recoil variables. So the first is recoil child, and this is of type transform. And this is going to remember the game object, or really the transform, that is going to be the game object that is going to have the gun model on it and have all the recoil movements on it. Uh, the next is recoil up angle. So this is going to be how much the gun is going to recoil up when it shoots. And then we have recoil random angle. And this is going to be how much randomly uh, the angle of the gun is going to move. So this can be in any direction, whereas recoil up is only in this direction. And then we, when we add that to recoil random angle, then we get like a good realistic uh, random movement from the recoil that is generally going to move mostly up. And then we have a uh, recoil Z amount. And this is going to be how much the gun moves backwards. Uh, and then we have recoil recover time, and this is the approximate number of seconds it's going to take for the enemy to move its gun back to its resting position. And then we just have a whole bunch of, whoops, I scrolled way too far. Then we have just a whole bunch of hidden variables, and these are all velocity variables, I think. Um, and these are all just for the uh, smooth damp function. Um, just to make sure that we get smooth movements out of the gun and so that we can control some smooth damp functions. Okay, I just have to re-go over one variable that I messed up. Original local pose isn't for the recoil child, it is for the game object with the enemy gun script attached to it. Uh, so the reason why I have this variable in place is to remember the original local position that we want the enemy to hold the gun at so that we know where we want the gun to be when it's trying to fire. Um, and the reason why I have this is because when the uh, enemy is unaware, I want to have the um, option of being able to animate the gun and have the gun more like resting at the side 
and just moving along naturally with the walking motions of the enemy uh, with the gun. Um, so that when the enemy does become aware, we can snap the gun back to that position so the enemy is actually aiming forward and aiming the gun uh, from the position that we want it to and then it will just ignore where it was previous to when it was being animated. Alright, so now let's take a look at what we have set up inside of function awake. First we have an if statement that says if target equals null target equal game object that dot find with tag player dot transform. So the variable target is whatever we want uh, the enemy to be shooting at. So if you want to uh, have the enemy shooting at say um, like literally a target or another enemy or just something you want something unique for the enemy to shoot at you can go ahead and drag and drop that game object in the inspector. Um, or you can drag and drop the player in the inspector, uh, but if you're too lazy to do that, like I am, we're just going to automatically make the target just be the player. So if target equals null, so in other words, if we didn't assign the target or the variable target to be anything, we're going to set target to game object dot find with tag player dot transform. So now we are remembering the transform of the player inside of the variable target. And now our next line of code is track burst equal fire burst time. This is from our previous episode. This was just to make sure that our uh, timers were set up correctly so that the enemy would start firing bullets um, and the timers would just be ready to go. Um, the next variable or the next line of code, I mean, is original local pose equals transform dot local position. So we're doing in the doing this in the very beginning uh, just to make sure that um, it isn't affected or so that we can remember the original local position uh, before the enemy starts animating itself. Uh, so original local position is the position that we want the gun to snap back to once the enemy becomes aware and once we actually want the gun to become active and actually start shooting. And so by doing that we're just going to set it to transform dot local position just to remember the local position. So that's how that works. Alright, now let's take a look at what we have inside of function awake. Um, so first of all, we have the big if statement, which ends right here. So this is all of the code from our previous episode, along with some new code from this episode. But before I get into that, I actually want to go over these five lines of code right here. Um, so what all of this is going to be doing is just handling the uh, recoil position and all of the smooth damp functions. So first let's take a look at all the smooth damp functions. So the first one we have is recoil rotation x equals mathf dot smooth damp recoil rotation x zero recoil rotation vx recoil recover time. Um, so recoil rotation x and I might as well also add in recoil rotation y because these two lines of code are pretty much completely identical except one is on the x axis and one is on the y axis. Um, so recoil rotation x and recoil rotation y are going to be variables that are just going to save where we want the gun to actually rotate after it's been smooth damped and all of that cool stuff. Um, so we're using the smooth damp function and then we are taking it from where it is now which is recoil rotation x or recoil rotation y and we want it to move back to zero so that the gun child centers back to its just forward regular rotation and then we have recoil rotation uh, vx and recoil rotation vy and the v stands for velocity and this is just the variable that we need inside of the smooth damp function just to make sure that everything moves nice and smoothly and then recoil recover time is uh, the variable that we defined in the inspector which is the approximate number of seconds that it's going to take for the gun to actually move back to its original position so now that we have the rotations out of the way, now let's take a look at rotation position Z. So this might throw some people off because we go uh, rotation X, rotation Y, and then position Z. And that is because for uh, recoil, we don't need any rotation along here. Uh, but we do need it to move its position because it needs to move backwards to have some realistic um, recoil. 
So we are just doing the exact same thing, but instead of affecting a rotation, we're affecting a position only along the z-axis. So, so these three variables combined together are going to control the recoil motion of the enemy gun, and then we're just going to have them constantly smooth damp back to zero so that when the enemy is not shooting, the gun moves back to its center position and is aiming forward again. I mean the recoil gun child, the one with the uh, model on it. And next we are going to take those variables and we're going to actually apply them to the recoil child. So we're going to do recoil child dot local position equal vector three zero zero recoil position z. So you want to make sure, or the recoil child, remember this is remembering the transform that is going to be a child of the actual game object that has the enemy gun script on it. And this child is going to have the gun model on it. And then it's also going to have, er, and the uh, bullet spawn point is also going to be a child of this gun recoil child. Um, and then we're going to affect the local position to make sure that we're not uh, setting a position in world space. We want to make sure that we're setting up a position relative to the gun. Um, and then we're going to set it to vector 3, 0, 0, recoil, whoops, recoil, position Z. We only want it to affect the uh, Z axis. We don't need it to move sideways or up or down. Um, the sideways and up and down are actually going to be rotation and they're going to be inside of this line of code here. So we have recoil child dot local rotation equal quaternion dot Euler uh, recoil rotation X recoil rotation Y zero. So basically just the complete opposite of what we have up here. Uh, we are taking the recoil child. We are affecting the local rotation. Once again, it is local because we don't want it to affect it in world space. We want to affect it relative to where the gun object is actually currently rotated. And then we're going to do quaternion dot Euler, and we're doing dot Euler because we have two float variables that we want to convert into a rotation. And then we are doing the rotation on the x-axis, rotation on the y-axis, and zero on the z-axis because we don't need the gun to turn in that sort of a motion. So these five lines of code are constantly going to be running and just um, handling the position and the base of the position and rotation of the recoil gun child. Alright, now let's take a look at our big if statement which extends to here. And first of all, I modified the if statement from where it was before to fix a glitch. So one of the glitches was that once the enemy is dead and fallen on the ground, it keeps on firing bullets. So that's a real simple fix. All we need to do is just test to make sure the enemy's health is larger than zero. So the if statement is if uh, movement script dot aware and movement script dot enemy health uh, is larger than zero. So we're just checking to make sure the movement script uh, is aware or anyways, or in other words, make sure that the enemy is actually aware that the player is around them and they are trying to kill the player now. Um, that is the time that we want the gun to snap to its original local position and just start shooting the player and actually aim at them. And then we're just testing to make sure the health is larger than zero to make sure that we are only firing bullets when the enemy is actually alive. And we're going to be changing this up in the future anyways because uh, we're going to want to make the uh, enemy gun object actually destroy itself and create um, an identical uh, gun which the player can then pick up or we can leave this as a gun that the player is not allowed to pick up if you want to skip that step um, but that's going to be one step we're going to be adding in the near future so the first line of code that we're going to be adding inside of this whole thing is transform dot local position equal original or orig local position um, so we're just making sure, well, I've said this like 20 times, just making sure that the gun snaps to where it wants to be after it has done the relaxed animation. Um, if track fire is larger than zero, I believe this is all from our previous episode starting here. So this is all just uh, taking care of whether or not we should be firing a bullet and just creating a timer of shooting bullets. Uh, but I did add inside of this if statement all of this right here. Um, if vector three dot angle 
enemy body transform dot forward comma target dot position minus transform dot position is smaller than max angle. So the every, everything inside of this if statement, we don't really need, oh wait, no, we are going to be going over some of this today. Um, but this is going to be taking care of just firing bullets and adding some recoil to the gun. Um, so we want to test to make sure that the gun is actually within an angle, that it makes sense to start shooting the, um, actually no, this wrong variable, not max angle. It should be, uh, what did I call it, start, start shoot? Angle start shoot. Ang yeah. Angle start shoot. So we want it to be the variable angle start shoot um, because we want uh, there to be a certain uh, direction before the uh, enemy actually starts trying to fire bullets at the player because it doesn't make sense if the player is over here and the enemy's aiming over here and it's shooting bullets. We want the enemy to be kind of smart and sort of pretend to be conserving ammo, even though we have infinite ammo, but we want the enemy to only fire bullets when the bullets are going to be generally in the direction of the player. Um, so we are using vector3.angle to find that. Now vector3.angle uh, gives you back an angle in between two directional vector threes or two vector threes that are representing a direction. So the first direction that we want is enemy body transform dot forward. Um, and actually we could just set this to transform dot forward. That actually I think would make more sense. And it would be kind of a negligible difference that you won't really notice that much. But anyways, transform dot forward is going to be the direction at which the gun is currently shooting or currently aiming. Um, and then we're going to compare that against transform or I mean target dot position minus transform dot position. So when we minus it like that, basically transform dot position becomes the zero 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 point and target position becomes the place that we are aiming at and when we minus these from each other uh, now we have a vector 3 that represents a direction from the gun to the player um, and now when we compare these two angles together inside of vector 3 dot angle we have an angle that represents the angle in between where the gun is actually aiming and the direction where the gun would need to be aiming to aim directly at the player and if that angle is with inside of angle start shoot, we are going to start shooting. All right, so now let's take a look at the three lines of code that we're gonna be adding inside of this if statement. Um, so, well, first of all, let's quickly go over. This uh, just instantiates the bullet or spawns a bullet at the bullet spawn point. Um, and then we're going to set track fire back to one. And those are the two lines of code that we had in our previous episode. Um, so now what we're adding in this episode is recoil rotation x plus equals random uh, dot value times 2 minus 1 times recoil random angle minus recoil uh, up angle. So the x axis uh, controls the rotation which is up and down or around the x axis as if it were an axle. Um, so we're going to be adding random dot value times two minus one. So now uh, everything that's inside of this parenthesis now gives us a random number that is randomly going to be in between negative one and positive one. And then we're going to multiply that by recoil random angle. And then we're going to minus recoil up angle. So uh, when these two things are added together along the x axis, we're going to have a little bit of randomization plus a default up amount. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing along the y axis. And remember y is side to side because we're rotating around the vertical y axis. And we're going to plus equal random dot value times two minus one. So we get the random number in between negative one and one. And we're going to multiply that by recoil random angle. And we are only doing recoil random angle because around the y axis, we want it to be even left and right, randomly even, I mean, between left and right. And then we are going to do recoil position z minus equal recoil z amount so that the gun moves backwards a little bit. 
All right, now after we actually created our bullets and our recoil, we have these two if statements, which are from our previous episode. And these are just the timers for holding down the trigger and letting go of the trigger. So we're not gonna go over those because we went over them in detail in our last episode. Um, so now let's take a look at this if else statement right here. So first of all, the if statement is if vector three dot angle enemy body transform dot forward comma target position minus transform dot position is smaller than max angle. So basically what this whole uh, if statement is asking is if the enemy body is generally looking uh, in the general direction of the player enough to actually make it worth it to try to aim the gun at. Because let's say the player is over there and the enemy is looking this way, it's not gonna make a lot of sense for them to try to hold their gun at a weird, awkward angle like this just to try to be uh, aiming at the player. But if they're at, say, like a 45 degree angle away from the player, or a 30 degree angle away from the player, it would kind of make sense for them to nudge their gun over a little bit and actually try to aim at the player. So that's what this whole if statement is about. So let's go over it in detail. So vector three dot angle, remember this is the function that returns us the angle between two vector threes that represent a direction. And the first direction that we're gonna give it is enemy body transform dot forward. Now in this case, we do want to use the enemy body transform and not just transform dot forward uh, because we are we want to know what direction the enemy body is actually looking because chances are uh, they might be running away from the player. Uh, excuse me. So they might be running away from the player and in that case, they're not going to be looking at the player. Um, so we need the forward direction to know what direction the enemy body is looking. And next is going to be a vector three that just like we have up here is going to represent the uh, direction uh, from the gun to the player. Uh, so target position minus transform dot position. So the transform dot position basically becomes zero, zero, zero um, because that's the gun. And then target position is going to be where we are aiming at. And now we have a vector three that represents the direction from the gun to the player. And then we're going to compare that against the direction that the enemy body is looking. And if that angle is smaller than max angle, then we are going to have the gun actually nudge itself over and actually try to aim at the player. And that is going to be this line of code here. All right, so this line of code is going to be what is going to control making the gun actually aiming at the player uh, relative to where the enemy body is. So uh, target rotation is going to be rotation in world space uh, because we've already determined that the gun and the enemy body are generally looking close enough at the player for the gun to actually try to aim at the player. So we're just going to aim at the player and we're going to use target rotation to do this because this line of code here, we're going to take the actual rotation of the gun and slurp it to the target rotation so that the gun doesn't just snap to where we want it to aim. So we're just creating a variable that is going to tell the gun exactly where we want the gun to be aiming at that particular moment. So we have target rotation equal quaternion dot look rotation target dot position comma transform uh, dot position. So uh, we are using quaternion dot look rotation. So this is kind of like uh, transform dot look at, but with transform dot look at, I believe you can either give it a vector three representing a point in world space, or you can give it an actual transform, I believe, um, whereas quaternion quaternion dot look rotation, it's going to create a uh, rotation in a quaternion. So remember quaternions are different from vector threes, uh, mainly because they just have the Z rotation in them. Um, and they're just more advanced and more geared towards angles and rotations than vector threes are. Um, so we're converting a directional vector three into a quaternion. So um, 
uh, you only put one thing or one vector three variable inside of quaternion dot look rotation and it's optional you can add a second uh, vector three inside of quaternion dot look rotation which is going to be the up or basically imagine uh, if you're looking at something and you have an arrow on your head pointing in the up direction so like if you were spider-man and you're on the side of the wall you're going to rotate more like this and in that case up would be that way but if we leave it blank it's going to be default world up so just somebody standing normally so we don't need to put anything in there we just need to add a vector 3 which is going to represent the direction that we want the gun to look and to do that we're going to do target dot position minus transform dot position just like we have up here and up whoops no up here. Um, so it is just target dot position minus transform dot position. So this is just the uh, when we minus transform dot position away from target position, we're getting a vector three that represents the exact direction towards the player. And then we put that inside of quaternion dot look rotation. And now we have a quaternion that represents a rotation in world space pointing directly at the player. Okay, next we have a line of code which is going to happen if this if statement returns false. So we have right here else. So if else, so if this is false, so in other words, if um, the enemy body is say running away from the player and the direction that the enemy is looking compared to the direction from the enemy to the player is way more than max angle, then we are just going to set target rotation to have the same rotation as the actual enemy body. So to do that, we're going to do target rotation equal quaternion dot look rotation, enemy body transform dot forward. So just like we have up here, except instead of giving it a more advanced or more complicated, I mean, uh, vector three representing the direction from the enemy to the player, we are just giving it a vector three, which represents the direction in which the enemy body is looking. So to do that, we simply write enemy body transform dot forward, and now we have a vector three that represents the forward direction of where the enemy is actually looking. And we put that inside of quaternion dot look rotation, and then save that inside of target rotation. So long story short, if the enemy is, has its back to the player, we're just going to have the gun aiming forward compared to where the enemy is actually looking. And I believe you probably could have also written enemy body tra transform dot rotation instead of this whole thing, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm actually pretty sure actually that would have worked too, but whatever, both ways work. So I just wanted to point that out real quick. Okay, now our next line of code is going to be the unaccuracy variable that we're talking about, or in other words, the gun wobble that we want the enemy to have. Um, so this is just um, a way of simulating uh, the enemy just being human and not having perfect robot aim. So we're going to do target rotation times equal quaternion dot Euler uh, random dot range unaccuracy times negative one unaccuracy uh, random dot range unaccuracy times negative one unaccuracy zero so let's start off with target rotation times equal so target rotation is a quaternion and uh, it was set in this if else statement up here so now we want to modify it from where it currently is. So that's why we're using times equal. So with quaternions, when you multiply a quaternion by a quaternion, the, the quaternion behind the uh, multiplication symbol gets rotated by the quaternion on the right hand side of the multiplication symbol. So now we just need a quaternion that is going to just add a little bit of wobble. So we're using quaternion dot Euler random dot range unaccuracy times negative one, which actually could be written also like that. That would be much shorter. 
but random.range is a function inside of the random class that is going to give you a number that is randomly going to be in between the first number you give it and the second number you give it. So we're giving it negative on accuracy and positive on accuracy so that we get a good amount of wobble in both directions um, just randomly. And then, so we're doing that on the X and Y axis because those two are the ones that have the smooth damp functions that are going to smooth damp it back to zero. Um, and then now we have a quaternion that just adds a little bit of randomization along the X and Y axis and we are just modifying target rotation by that random amount. And next we are going to actually apply the target rotation to the actual rotation. So to do that we have just this one line of code here and it is, whoops, crap, all right, there we go. Uh, Transform.rotation equals quaternion.slurp transform.rotation target rotation turn speed times time dot delta time. So we're using quaternion.slurp to slurp the angle to where we want it to be. Um, and the original position or where it is now is transform.rotation. And then we want it to get to target rotation because transform.rotation is where it is now. And we don't want it to just snap to where we want the gun to be. We want it to actually have a little bit of time because in real life, guns have some weight to it and you can't just instantly snap it to where you want it to aim. You actually have to move the momentum of the gun. So that's why we have this whole uh, line of code in place. And then uh, we want it to move at turn speed times time dot delta time. And so, of course, if you make turn speed a larger number, the faster the gun is going to snap to where you want it to go. So I believe that is all the code that we need to go over today. So now let's cut the green screen and go into Unity and show you how to do that inside of Unity. All right, here we are inside of Unity. And let's take a look at the actual gun parent and the recoil child and what's a child of the recoil child. So first of all, we have the enemy movement script, which is that sphere guy down there. The enemy body, which is basically everything that is the enemy body. And then in particular, the torso. And then the gun parent is a child of the torso. And then the recoil child is a child of the gun parents. And then we have the actual model here. And you can either, um, well, actually, um, it probably... I guess it can go either way, but uh, you can put the model either as uh, components on this actual recoil child or have the actual model be its own game object and be a child of the recoil child. It should work either way, but I chose to make it a child of the recoil child just because this particular model has a bunch of little parts. Okay, so uh, next is the bullet spawn and the bullet spawn... Um, will always be lined up with the gun right at the tip of the barrel there. And then we have the hand targets. And then we have uh, the colliding box for the actual rigid body of the gun parent. Okay, so those are all the components, or all of the children that you need to be familiar with to know how the script is going to work. So I just wanted to quickly go over that. And now let's actually edit the gun script. So I believe in the text edit file over here, we had movement script instead of enemy movement script. So I'm going to press control F enemy whoops, movement script movement script. And I'm going to click on the replace all button. Cool, so if uh, you didn't happen to know about that trick, it's um, Command F if you're on a Mac, and I believe Control F if you're on a PC. But lately I have found that to be very useful. All right, and next we have, what, the body script for body script. And this is going to be an enemy body script. Alright, and let me go over to my text file and see el what else we need. Uh, we need the enemy body transform. So, enemy, oops, 
enemy body transform trans whoops form and we need the original local position and we don't need to see in the inspector actually there's tons of variables in here that could have the at hide in an inspector put on it but I'm just going to do that later because it's not uh, important for the functionality right now it's just convenience so anyways the next variable is targets and that is going to be the player or whatever you want to set it to in the inspector turn speed is the variable which determines how fast the gun actually turns to where we want to point the gun target rotation is going to be a quaternion that will represent the rotation in world space that we actually want the gun to be aiming at uh, unaccuracy the larger you make this number the more the gun is going to wobble max angle is going to be the largest angle um, away from the enemy body that it will actually try to aim at the player and angle start shoot is the maximum angle that the gun will have to be away from the uh, player before it actually starts trying to shoot and then we have body script and movement script all set up cool and then we got to deal with all the recoil stuff. So I'm going to copy and paste this as a whole. So the recoil child, we will set, whoops. We will set in the inspector to be this game object here, so we'll drag and drop it in the inspector. And recoil up angle, that will be the angle at which it will recoil up. Random angle, the random amount of recoil every shot that it goes in randomly any direction. Uh, recoil Z amount, the amount it moves backwards every shot. And recoil recover time is how long it will take to return to normal after the gun has stopped shooting. And now we need all of these variables here, which are just for smooth damp functions. And to keep track of uh, the local position and rotation that the gun child should be at. So we have the three velocity variables uh, recoil rotation VX, so velocity along the X axis, uh, rotation velocity along the Y axis, posi position ve velocity along the Z axis, and then rotation X, rotation Y, and position Z. And we will just use all these variables in combination with uh, mathf.smoothdamp functions to actually move the enemy, I mean the gun child, where we want it to go. So now let's take a look at what we're going to be putting inside of function awake. So first of all, we are taking the variable target and we are checking whether or not the game designer or you have uh, actually assigned the variable target to anything and if you haven't, so if you have, don't want to do anything special uh, for what the enemy is aiming at, it's just going to automatically find the player and save the transform of the player through its tag and save it in the variable target so that we can reference where we are aiming. Um, what's next? Original local position. So we got to actually uh, save the original local position because by default it's set to 000 and that might not be the original local position. So this is its original local position uh, relative to the torso because the gun object is a child of the torso. So we have orig local pose equal transform dot local position and then after this the uh, animation if you choose to change the position of the gun will uh, change and then we can revert back to this position so that the actual uh, movement of the gun or position of the gun actually makes sense. Alright, let's take a look at, okay, first of all, we need to copy and paste this and put it inside of here. 
Oops. So before we had a big, big if statement right here that was just checking whether or not the enemy was aware. But we actually don't want the enemy to be shooting bullets if the enemy is also dead. So actually let me double check to make sure enemy health is inside the enemy movement script. Uh, oh that might actually be saved inside of the enemy body. Let me check. Oh, yep, it's inside of the enemy body. So we got to change that real quick. So let's just change it to body script. Oops, script was already in there. Okay. So now we have an if statement that checks to make sure um, to only do all this stuff if the enemy actually knows the player is there and if the enemy is still alive. So next, what do we need to do? Uh, we need to um, set the local position back to its original local position if the enemy is aware and alive. Because the pos position or the local position of the gun might change if you change it in the animations. Um, that line of code was already there and we need to add this line of code or this if statement right here. So let's add to this if statement. I mean, what if statement was it? Was it this one? Let me, if track fire is smaller than or equal to zero, if track fire, I'm so lost. Okay, it was just on the opposite side of the code. So that took me a second. That's why you should comment your code and actually take the time to comment your code but I haven't taken the time to do that, so I'm a bad example. That would have been easier to find if I commented everything. But anyways, so um, before we were just checking to make sure the timer was basically uh, ready to go with these two conditions here, and uh, when we actually wanted to fire a bullet according to the timer, and then we instantiated the bullet and then reset the timer. So now we're adding the condition if we are actually aiming within an angle of angle start shoot of the player. So uh, vector3.angle is a function that will return us uh, the difference uh, in degrees between two uh, vector directional vector3s. So we're comparing transform.forward and target position minus transform position. So in other words, a vector3 that represents the direct direction from uh, our transform or the gun object to the player. And if that angle is within angle start shoot, then we will shoot. So now we need to add the recoil um, lines of code right here. So copy and paste. So we have we are affecting the X rotation. So X rotation is up and down when we're talking about rotations. Um, random dot value times two minus one. So random dot value is randomly in between uh, zero and one, multiply that by two, randomly in between zero and two minus one, randomly in between negative one and positive one. And then we're going to multiply that by recoil random angle minus up angle. So now we have a general uh, random movement that the gun will go up plus a little extra to go up because that is the way guns recoil. And then we do the same thing along the Y axis, which is left and right, um, except we are not minusing recoil up because this is the side to side randomization. And then we just minus equal uh, recoil amount from recoil position Z. Uh, to make the gun move backwards. Okay, so now we have all of that recoil stuff taken care of. And then while we're talking about recoil stuff, we might as well copy and paste all this recoil stuff. And this has to be outside of this if statement. Okay, so we are basically just going to mathf.smoothdamp all three of these variables, so the rotation x, rotation y, and position z, 
back to zero. And we're going to do that at a speed of recoil recover time, so basically the approximate number of seconds for these variables to all get back to zero. And then we have all the velocity variables right here, and then their, their current state right here, and then the mathf dot smooth damp. And then we are going to apply those three values. So first we're going to affect the local position of the recoil child. So when we access it like this, we're talking about the recoil child, which is the transform of the recoil child. And then we are going to affect its local position so it moves relative to where the gun actually is. And then we are going to move it to vector 3, 0, 0, recoil position Z, because we only want it to move backwards. And then recoil child dot local rotation equal quaternion dot Euler recoil rotation x, recoil rotation y, 0 because we're not rotating around the z axis, just the x and y, and we need the function Euler to convert these Euler angles into a quaternion so that it can go into the local rotation. Wow, my mouth was dry. Okay, what next? Um, this. Oops, okay. And I believe that can just go anywhere really with inside the big if statement. So, uh, first of all, let me press enter to try to space that out a little bit more. Okay, so we have vector or if vector three dot angle and we are comparing the angle between the enemy body transform dot forward and the direction from uh, the gun to the player. And if it is within max angle, we are actually going to have the gun try to aim towards the player. So we have target rotation equal quaternion dot look rotation, target position minus transform dot position. So the angle from the uh, gun to the player, and we're putting it through the function look rotation, to convert the vector 3 into a quaternion so that it can go into target rotation. But now if uh, the enemy body is not pointing towards the player enough to actually um, make it worth it to try to aim at the player, we are just going to have the target rotation uh, match whatever um, the enemy body rotation is. And then we are going to multiply the rotation by quaternion dot Euler random dot range negative unaccuracy positive unaccuracy random dot range negative unaccuracy positive unaccuracy zero so we're just uh, adding the unaccuracy variable to the target rotation just to make it extra random and add gun wobble to the actual gun and make it look like the enemy is more human and doesn't have perfect aim. And then we are going to smooth out the rotation from where the gun is actually rotated to the target rotation. So we're going to use quaternion.slurp for that. So um, the rotation that we're at now, the rotation that we want to get to, and how fast we want to get to it, and we want to get to it at a speed of turn speed at times time dot delta time. Okay, so... I believe that is all the code. So let's go set up our variables in the inspector. So enemy body transform. And now targets, we can go ahead and leave that blank. Um, and then we want the recoil child right there. Movement script, this guy right here. Body script, enemy body. Um. And I think that's everything. So let's see how this looks. So first of all, I actually have to make the enemy see me. Oh, I have the enemy set to walk really, really slow. Okay, the enemy sees me. Now they're moving faster. It looks like he's not trying to shoot at me if he can't aim at me. And it looks like he has recoil. All right, look this way. 
Shoot. Yep, he totally has recoil. A little too much recoil. But it appears to be working. And once again, there's the glitch where he runs off the map when the player is dead. Wait, what's this? Is that the player? Oh my gosh, that is the player. What's happening? That is very weird. Oh, it's because there's no friction on it, maybe? I don't know. I'll have to figure that out later. But the part of the tutorial that we were trying to get to work is definitely working, so let's concentrate on that part. So, until my next episode, I'll see you guys later, and keep making games.